My name is Michael from BioBigBox. We're going to be we're going to be discussing BioBigBox, which is HIPAA, HIPAA compliant file transfer and storage system. Just to give a little bit of an overview about where the need came from. BioBigBox is developed by Blue Sky Bio. For those of you who may not be familiar, Blue Sky Bio is a dental technology company. One of its products and services that it provides is Blue Sky Plan. Blue Sky Plan is a treatment planning software. It takes DICOM images from a CT scanner and allows a dentist to create a treatment plan. The data coming out of the CT scanner is quite large and could be a couple of 100 megabytes in size. And the treatment plan created by Blue Sky Plan can also be quite large. So the question arises, now we have this fantastic software being used in many different countries throughout the world, but what is the proper way to go ahead and transfer and transfer the CT information and transfer the completed treatment plan. So from here, the need arose, which led to the development of BioBigBox to go ahead and transfer this data. But the need is not just dental. The need to meet the HIPAA rules and regulations is connected to anybody who's connected to a medical practice and is transferring digital data that contains patient information. As a result, Blue Sky Bio went ahead and developed BioBigBox, which is a live website that can be used for the file for file transferring and storage. Mr. Brian Tuttle, a HIPAA consultant, gave a presentation a little while back to BioBigBox on the rules and regulations of HIPAA, the need to abide by them. That's not the focus of the presentation today, so I'm not going to be going into that in detail, but I do want to provide a little bit of an overview in just a couple of minutes for those of you who may be less familiar about what we're talking and discussing here. Back in 1996, the Health Insurance Portability Act was created by President Bill Clinton and Congress and established the need for any situation where there's personal health information involved, that measures need to be taken to ensure that they're kept confidential as much as possible. We're talking about personal health information, which I saw a great definition, which is talking about data created or received by health plan and or relates to the health of an individual or the provision of the health or the payment connected to the provision of health. All this type of information is categorized as personal health information and as such needs to abide by the rules and regulations that are stipulated by the HIPAA law. So we're talking about any sort of information, digital or non-digital, that contains personal information about a patient or the, or the care that they're receiving and the need to deal with this data and to, and to keep it confidential as much as possible. Now, at, at the beginning, until around 2013, HIPAA was there, the rules were there, but as Mr. Tuttle showed in his presentation, it was more like a puppy that was there, but didn't seem to be too threatening, didn't seem to have too much teeth or bite involved. However, in 2013, the, rules, the HIPAA rules were updated and it turned from a puppy into a badger with teeth that has a lot of power to it. Okay, there's a modified law that came out called HIPAA Omnibus Rule that modified the original HIPAA rules and regulations. And what it really did is it turned the puppy into a badger. It gave a lot more power, a lot more teeth, it increased the penalties, it increased the burden, and it also had a lot of information connected to electronic personal health information. And that's our focus for the presentation, the focus of the need that we're providing a solution to with BioBigBox. And it became a much more significant issue as of 2013. And again, I'm not gonna go into all the nuances of enforcing it and the penalties that was discussed. And there's actually gonna be another presentation in a couple of weeks given again by Mr. Tuttle discussing practical steps that medical practices could take besides using BioBigBox to make sure they're compliant 
and ways to become compliant. Okay, so to summarize, we've given an overview of where the need came from. Blue Sky Bio saw the need in the dental industry, but it's not connected to dentistry in particular. It's medical, it's connected to any, any information regarding patients and personal health information. And the rules that were created starting in 1996 and then strengthened in 2013 requires a solution to deal with this type of information. And you can see on the screen here, we're just talking about EPHI, which is electronic personal health information, which again is what we're focusing on now. Which leads us to the creation of BioBigBox. Again, it's the HIPAA compliant file transfer and storage system. It's a nice website with a beautiful picture in the back that changes occasionally. It's created to have lots of features and functionality on one hand, on the other hand, to be super simple for the user to use. And we're gonna discuss that, those features and functionalities and capabilities and how it could be used during this presentation. Okay, we saw on the home page when the user comes to the home page, there's a send files now box. It really can't get much simpler than this. A user could come, put in their email address, the email address of the person they're sharing with. They wanna include a message, they could type into the message box, attach the relevant files. They could be really large files, that's fine. That's exactly what the system is created to handle. And they could send it, you could send it and it gets to the user and the user receives it. When you send the file, you get a thumbs up that your file was sent with it message saying click the confirmation email to complete the send. Okay, now this is necessary for a user that's not registered. And one might ask, okay, you know, how come I need to do this extra step? And the answer to this and some other things that we're gonna see is that because we are HIPAA compliant, there are some additional rules, additional levels of security that need to be taken into consideration when using the system. If you're sending a file to somebody, we need to know that you as the sender and your email address really is who you're saying it is. So in this situation, you're gonna get a confirmation email sent to you. You could click on it and that will send the file. A way to get around that extra step is to register for the site. It simplifies the process and it opens up other great additional features that we have on the website. The registration is very easy to use. It's very easy to do. In the top right corner of the website, you have the options for sign in, send, and upload. There's a link there to register free. Registration is just defining your email address and setting your password and you're registered. So now when you go and you send a file, you can click send in the top right. It opens up the box. It no longer asks you for your email address because you're now registered so the system knows who you are and you're confirmed, you get a confirmation email when you register as well. But from that point moving forward, when you send an email, you just put in the recipient's email address, you put in any message that you want to include, and you attach the data, okay? So it's really simple, straightforward, and easy to use. And here we see the send box magnified a bit. You put in the recipient's email address, the message, and you connect the files. We're gonna discuss a little bit later, there's a button for upload files and upload folder. One of the great features is you can upload a folder that's unzipped. So if you're dealing with a CT scan or anything similar, you don't even have to zip it in order to upload it. Uh, we're gonna to get to that a little bit later in the presentation. When you send the file, you get a thumbs up, the file sent, and you're no longer even asked to confirm via the link in the email because you're a registered user. Now you could go ahead and send files very, simply straight away like that. When you send a file, the receiver receives an email. Again, as simple as can be. There are two buttons, download now and view my data. They don't even, they don't need to be registered by a big box user. They'll get the email. They have an option to download the file or they have an option to view it in the bio big box website in the my data section, which we're gonna get to. And the user simply gets the email, they can download it, they can keep it stored online. Either way, it's fine. Again, a very simple and straightforward process. Now, this is some additional features that you get when you're registered. Okay, the registration, by the way, there's no cost involved. You can go and you can do it. You can create as many accounts as you like for different people. There should be one account per person and not to share accounts, that it's also one of the HIPAA requirements that you shouldn't, other people should not be accessing 
information that they shouldn't be accessing. And you have this screen that stores your files and displays your files, and you're able to access this from the My Data on the BioBigBox website. If we zoom in and take a look at the My Data capabilities, first of all, you have a filter in the top left that allows you to see all the information, or you could send it, or you could filter it by message by files that you sent or you received. You see the list of files. You see all sorts of information connected to the files. And in the top right, you also have an upload file button that you could use if you want to add an additional file to be stored. Going along the left side of the file names, you have you have checkboxes. The checkboxes allows you to select multiple files or a single file and to perform an action such as download, delete, or share. So if you receive multi, you have multiple files there, you want to download all of them to your computer, you check the checkboxes, you click the download button, and it gets downloaded. You want to share a couple of large files with somebody else, you check the checkboxes, you click the share button, you put, you'll be able to put in the recipient's email address, and once again, the files are shared. If there are any questions during the presentation, by the way, please feel free to put them in the chat box, and I'll be happy to address them during, uh, during the presentation. Okay. Next, we have a column for downloads. It shows you a number of times the file was downloaded, not by you, but by other people that you share the file with. So when you share a file with somebody, first of all, they get a notification that you share the file with them. As we saw earlier, they could download it or they could view it in their BioBigBox account. But you, as the person who sent it, could see how many times the file was downloaded. You can also notice a difference between the background color of some of the files have more of a grayish background color and some of them have more of a white background color, similar to many email programs. Um, the white is for the unread or the undownloaded, and the gray is for files that were downloaded or files that you yourself sent to somebody else. So the white background is for received files that you have not yet downloaded. We also have a column for a patient name. You're able to just click on the box and type in the patient name. A big advantage of this is that there's a search box. The search box searches on the patient name as well as email addresses, as well as contents of messages. But here it provides a very quick way to pull up all the files associated to a particular patient. You can put the patient name in, you search on the patient, and the search results shows you only files associated to a particular patient. Okay. To respond to a couple of questions, you know, let me finish going over the screen and then I'll respond to a few questions. You also have an option of shared with. It shows you, here we'll show you the last person who shared with. The shares column to the right of this column will show you the number of shares. And from the shared with column, you could also go ahead and share it with additional people by pressing the plus button. Now, one of the great things about the system is, is how it's shared. Now the plus button, when it's pressed, brings up the screen that you're now currently looking at. Let me tell you why it's, been, why it's really important and critical and, and this is a great solution. If you're sharing a file with somebody and you're able to give them a download link. Now with this download link, maybe they get it via email or however they get it, they're able to download the file without logging into any system, without having to prove who they are. You've created a problematic situation for you and the recipient. If somebody's able to download a file without having to log in to get access or to prove who they are, then you're either using a non-HIPAA compliant system or you're using a system in a way that's not HIPAA compliant. Because in that situation, if you put a link into an email and send it to somebody, now maybe the person has a virus on their computer, we've all seen this, that the email, the particular email sent out you know, to hundreds of people on your contact list or maybe if you forward it to somebody and you put in the wrong email address, you're sharing private information with people that should not be receiving it, and there's no confirmation that the correct person is accessing this information. 
But we've built into BioBigBox is an intelligent way of doing that. You put in the Sherry's email address, they get a notification via email. In addition, you could send them a link. You could copy the share link that appears on the bottom of the box highlighted in red. You could put it into an email and you send it to them. What's the difference? If you send it to the wrong person and they click on that link, they're gonna get a message saying they're not approved to see that information. We're dealing with an intelligent share link system. So even if you put the link into an email and send it to somebody, if you haven't defined them as a recipient, you haven't put their email into the share with, then they're not gonna be able to access the data. So again, this is another added level of, uh, per, uh, another precautionary level, another added level of security to make sure that only proper people with the proper information is getting access to the information that they should be getting access to. So the share box, after you press the plus button in that shared column, it pops up a window, it shows who the file is currently shared with. You're able to add another email address. Immediately when you add it, the recipient receives an email from BioBigBox. In addition, you could send them the share link in your email, you're writing about a patient, you're writing about whatever, you put a link in and say, here's their, here's their data. But again, that link that you're putting into the email will only work for people that the file is meant to be shared with. Now, if somebody receives it and they want to share it again with someone else who should have access to the information, they could share it from their bio big box account. So that would work. But what you're concerned about is that when you're doing the share, only the person that you're sending it to is receiving that information. So again, it's an intelligent share link, a very important and powerful feature of bio big box. And here we see it uh, zoomed in. You have information regarding who it's currently shared with who else you want to share it with, and that share link that you could copy and you could put into an email, but it will only work for the intended recipients. Okay, the last column is a messages box. You could, in addition to sending the actual files, you can message back and forth. You could send the message, hey, take a look at the data, please, tell me know, please let me know what you think, and they could respond, and the messages all show up when you click on the plus next to the number of messages, it will show up kind of the chat connected to the case. And all that information is associated to a particular file that's uploaded and on BioBigBox. Okay, and here we see how the message system looks, the message exists, you can send a message, you could get the message, you can respond to the message, and then you'll have the chat showing up here with the people involved and the date of each message. Another final feature of this section is the status column on the right side. If you, it opens up a drop down list. There's a couple of different options there for pending, completed, waiting, waiting for response, and just a good way of keeping track also for cases that are going on, where that particular case is going on. We have the search options that searches on old information and the show all in the top right opens up how far back you want to see the data on your list. If it has different options for two weeks, 30 days, 60 days. So it's another way of filtering the information. Okay, before going on, I'm going to address some questions that are coming in. Do I understand that the service is free? Yes, okay, so the service is free. There are also paid options. The service is free. Everything that we discussed and we're going to be discussing is free until we get to a point where I point out that it's no longer free. But you could go ahead, you could do everything that we just discussed and more features and functionalities that we're gonna be discussing without having to pay anything. We recommend registering because you get more features and functionality and it also streamlines processes such as sending and allows you to store the files and see them later on. But you could go in today create an account and send and receive using a HIPAA compliant system at no cost. How long are the files stored? Are they deleted at some point? And how big is the available storage? Great question. The files are not deleted. They're sta they keep existing in the account. The free account, I believe is a couple of gigabytes of data, which is quite a significant amount if you're storing uh, treatment plans or CT scans, if you exceed that amount, you could you could upgrade. 
And that's when it becomes paid. You upgrade, and then you get a significant amount of data. The next jump, it could reach 100 gigabytes or several hundreds of gigabytes of data with, uh, with a low monthly payment. And that is one of the features of upgrading and paying, is that you get more storage. And we're going to discuss that there's some additional functionality that's for the paid plans. But again, you could use the basic functionality, send, receive everything that we've discussed and some other stuff we're going to be discussing now at no cost. And if you reach the limit, storage limit, either you could upgrade, you could delete old files, which we don't necessarily recommend, but that is an option, or you could go ahead and upgrade. Can I send from my office so I can review at home? Yes, but you don't even need to do that. On the home page, in the top right, there was send and upload. If you want to just store the the store data for yourself, so you can access it from anywhere, then you could just use the upload button. It doesn't ask you to share it with anybody. It doesn't ask you to enter a recipient's email address. It, you just upload it, and it goes into your my data. You could access it from anywhere, anytime, any place. It's also good if you have want to be able to access the CT scans or any data that you're sharing from multiple locations. So you put it up into your into your bio big box cloud, your my data as we call it, and it's there and it's accessible. It's accessible. We're building, we're continuing to develop and build in a lot more great functionality, including the ability to automatically synchronize and backup from your computer to your account, and some other features which we're not going to discuss at this point, but. Uh, the system is going to continue getting better and better. And for those of you who are familiar with our treatment planning software, you're aware that also once we get started on a project, things just keep getting better and better. Okay, to move along with the presentation, another cool feature that we've built in is email aliases. Now, what's the need for this and what does this mean? It's happened to me when I'm using other systems that allow files to be shared, that somebody uses one of these systems and sends me a file and they say, hey, did you get it? And I say, I got it, but you sent it to, you shared it with my wrong email address. Maybe you sent it to my personal one instead of my work one, my work one instead of my personal one. And the account that I have for that particular service only is only registered to my other email address. So now the person has to go back and resend it to the correct email address. Or maybe it happens that they sent it to a, a different email address and I didn't notice it because I'm using another email address. So I didn't know that the file came in. What we've created with BioBigBox's email aliases, you list all your email addresses and all the files sent to any of those email addresses come into one account. It's all centralized and organized for you. How does it work? Let me just back up a second. The When we saw the homepage of BioBigBox in the top right was your email address. And when you click on your email address, it opens up a dropdown. And one of them is add aliases. During the presentation, as we move forward, then it comes up again. I'll show you exactly where to click. But you go ahead and click the add alias button. You put in your other email address and you click the save option. Now you get a notification that a confirmation email was sent. Of course, if you're adding another email address, we need to make sure that it's your email address. It shows up as not confirmed. Once you click on the confirmation email, then it comes up as confirmed. Okay, now you have multiple email addresses listed there. And again, to, to summarize and explain, any file that's sent to any of these email addresses, any of your email addresses, will go into your single bio big box account. Okay, if you want to click the make default button, what that means is that when you're sending a file to somebody else, it's going to show that it's going to show up as it was being sent from your alias and not from your primary, which is fine. So it's just another way of controlling. Now you can log into BioBigBox with any of these email addresses that you've listed there. Maybe you're listing two or four or five email addresses. When you go to BioBigBox and you're logging in. You don't need to sit and think, hey, which one did I create my account with? You just go, you use any of them with the same password, and it logs into your BioBigBox account. 
Another cool feature is the ability, and I mentioned this earlier, is the ability to send an unzipped folder. So maybe you have a CT that's on your computer. Maybe you want to send it. Now, instead of having to go zip it up and then send it, you can just click the upload folder button. What it does is it opens an interface like we're seeing now. You select the folder that you want to send, and all the files start getting uploaded and saved into your BioBix, Bio, Bio Big Box account. Now, it doesn't make a mess of now you have a CT scan with 150 images. You don't now see 150 images in your Bio Big Box account. Instead, you see a folder, and the folder contains all of the images from that. The folder contains all of the images or all of the files in that particular folder. And you could drill down, you could open up that folder, and you see the path of the folder and what's inside of it. You could share the folder. You could use all of the features and functionalities that we've discussed until now on a folder level. Now, this sending of unzipped folder works only in Chrome, OK? Because of the way Chrome is built and the way other browsers are built, we're able to implement it only in Chrome. So if you have Chrome, great. If you want to start using Chrome, that's a Google Chrome is Google's web browser. If you want to start using Google Chrome, you could download it, you know, Google it, and then download it. That doesn't cost any money. But uh, because of the structure of the different web browsers, the unzipped folder functionality works only in Google Chrome. Everything else besides the unzipped folder works in different browsers. Now, everything that we've discussed until now, all the features and functionality could be used without any sort of payment. You go, you create your account, and everything can be used at no cost. We discussed if you want more storage, then you're able to upgrade. And upgrading also gives you access to another powerful feature that we have. Once you upgrade, you're able to create a personalized page where people could send you data. You're gonna, and we're gonna demonstrate it in a second. You could put your own background on it, your own logo on it. You could customize it. You could create a form with exactly the fields that you want and only the fields that you want. And you could give out the web address to whoever you want. They could access it and they could send you files. You can also put a button on your website that says upload upload large files or or FTP files, whatever you want to call it. You put a button on your website and it accesses, it brings up your personal bio big box page with your own branding and your own logo and everything. And people could send you large files that way and fill out the information that's in the form as well. Here's an example of a page, and we're going to present how to create it in a matter of, in, it just takes a couple of minutes. It created for Blue Sky Bio. Put in a nice picture in the background, put in the logo in the top left, created a form, and, and it's live. It's good to go. Also, in addition to putting in the logo in the background, you could put in a link so that if somebody clicks on the background or clicks on the logo, they're brought to whatever website that you want. Let's take a look at that. When you go ahead and click on your email address, oh, this is what we discussed previously, by the way, as well. How do you access the email aliases? You click on your email address, it opens up a dropdown. Previously, we we're discussing email aliases here. That's where you go ahead and you set it up. And now we're discussing creating this upload, the personalized upload page. And the way that you get to it is by going to upload settings. You can also see here, that the amount of storage available is 300 gigabytes. Once you're upgrading to this type of account, you get a vast amount of storage um, to take advantage of. So you go to Upload Settings, and you get to this section. The first thing you're able to do in the box that's highlighted in red is to create your web address. The beginning of the web address is set, but the end, you can put in whatever you want. So here I put in. BSB for Blue Sky Bio, the web address that I could either give out or I could use to create a button on the website. 
is the web address that's combined with the first part of with however you decide to customize it. Okay? And you can also see it right underneath the save button. Down here, if you could see the if you could see the mouse, it also shows you it shows and has a link that you could click on. Anyway, the next thing that you do after deciding what you want the web address to do is to simply upload images for the logo and for the background. You click choose file, you choose the file that you want, and it uploads it, it creates your page. Underneath the choose file for the logo and for the background, you could put in the URL, the web address, to be taken to if they click on the logo or click on the background. The next part of the page is the title. We call this page the Blue Sky Bio Upload page. That's the page that I created for Blue Sky Bio. And we're going to look at we're going to look at it in a second side by side with the settings and with the upload page, so we can see how everything affects the actual. And here you're able to create your form. You put in the name next to each field, whatever you want. It's free text. You decide how large you want the box to appear, how many rows you want it to appear. You should create active if you want it to be live and visible. If you want to hide it or take it down but not delete it, then you could go ahead and just uncheck active. And require means that the user needs to fill, to fill out that field in order to submit the form. If you want to delete the field, you just click remove. And you could go ahead and click the add more button. You could see to the bottom left of the red highlighted box, there's an add more button. You want to put in additional fields, go ahead and do that. In every form, by default, is an email field for the person who's submitting the file, and obviously the upload button where they could attach a file. So that doesn't appear here, but it's inserted automatically. Of course, every form, we need to know who's submitting it, and you need to get the, the file. The bottom is the URL of the page that you just created. What we see underneath the box, highlighted in red, is an embedded code. So we've discussed, okay, you've created this page, now you want to share it. You want to tell everybody that you're associated with how to send you files. So you could either send them the URL, you could send them the web address, you could create a button on your website, and when the button is pressed, it will open your dedicated page. Another option is taking the embed code, and you could then put it into your existing website. You could ask your web developer, or whoever deals with your website, to put the embed code in, on a page that you want in your own existing website, and it will put the form into your website. Okay, similar to the way that you can embed a YouTube video into a website, you have the embed code next to the YouTube video, and you can embed it into your website. So we have the same functionality here for the form. You've created your form, you have your own website, you want to be able to receive large files via your own website. So you take the embed code and you could put it into your website. Okay, and that's what we see in the bottom highlighted in red. Okay, now we see side by side the web page that was created and the settings that were done. And I know it's a bit small now because they're side by side, but I hope you could see it anyway. If you click at the URL of the upload page on the left, you could see obviously it corresponds to the set URL and the settings to the right of it. The files that were uploaded became the background and became the logo. The text that you could see in the middle of the settings where it says Blue Sky Bio Upload Page on the right side became the header for the form. The fields listed in the settings became the fields in the form. The row sizes that we've set in the settings determines the size of the form field how many rows it takes up. You can see the case details box is three rows. It's the biggest in the form. And of course, there's the upload button and the email address by, uh, field that shows up automatically in every, every, in every form. Now, if you take the embed code and you put it into your own website, then the form is what's gonna show up in your website, not the background, not the logo, not the images that you're uploading, but the form itself is gonna show up on your website, and it could be used to get these files. Now, somebody goes ahead and 
fills out the form, attaches the large data files, and clicks the upload button. It now shows up in your bio big box account. Okay? All of the data submitted via the form will show up in an organized fashion as we discussed earlier in your bio big box account. The files that you haven't seen yet will have a white background. The files that you did see will have a grayish background. It shows you who sent it. It shows you all the data from the form. So all of that goes into a very organized list in your bio big box account. And here's the completed upload page. Again, again it could be created, you know, take a few minutes to put the settings in, spits out your upload page with your URL, your logo, your background, your fields, and you're good to go. Changing anything is also super simple as we saw earlier. Now, we're not done. We're done with the presentation. We're almost done with the presentation, but Bio Big Box is going to keep getting better and better. One of the ways to stay updated with developments is on our new Facebook page. You could go ahead and you can check it out. You could like it. We update the information there with new features and new functionality. Within a couple of weeks, we should have very significant uh, new features and functionalities that we're looking forward and very excited about announcing. So stay connected, stay tuned, and stay up to date. The ways to contact us on the Bio Big Box page, uh, there are a couple of pages inside of it that you could access from the drop down list, and one of them is a contact form. You could contact us via the phone number that's listed there. That's the 312 number. You can also email us at info at biobigbox.com. If anybody wants additional training on how to use the system or has any questions on how to use the system, so go ahead and contact us and we'll be happy to uh, help you out. That uh, pretty much wraps up the presentation. Just to summarize in two minutes what we've taken a look at and discussed, we saw at the beginning where the need came from. We discussed how Blue Sky Bio is a dental technology company dealing with CT scans, dealing with treatment plans, we needed a solution to handle all this data, how users could transfer this data back and forth in a HIPAA compliant manner, and hence Bio Big Box was created. But again, it's not a need, particular dentistry, it's connected to anything medical, anything connected to particular uh, patient information, anything connected to their treatments, who provide the treatment, their personal information, all that stuff needs to comply with the HIPAA rules and regulations that were put into place back in uh, 1996, became much more serious in 2013. And Bio Big Box is the solution to transfer and store HIPAA compliant digital data. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, there was a presentation given by Mr. Brian Tuttle, who's a HIPAA consultant that's recorded on, on YouTube. You can also contact us, we'll send it to you. That was discussing in detail a lot of the requirements and rules and regulations of HIPAA. There's another presentation that he's also gonna be giving in two weeks from now on practical steps that you could take in your practice besides Bio Big Box to make sure you're HIPAA compliant and to become more HIPAA compliant. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. Before I address questions that are coming in, Below the video screen in the presentation that you're watching, whether you're watching from YouTube or whether you're watching from the event page, there's a link to put your information into the webinar attendance form. Okay, let us know that you attended so that we could send you the CE credit for attending. Okay, the cost of the pro version The cost of the pro version, there are a couple of different versions. There's one to just increase your data storage. There's another one uh, to allow you to have the upload functionality. Please take a look at the website, go to the pricing page, and, and uh, the information is there. The questions regarding the programming and the encryption and the servers, I'm not gonna get into all of this now, but uh, we have some information on the website. Other information could be provided in more detail.
and uh, let us know. Um, regarding the upload page, uh, okay, regarding sending files, everything that uh, we discussed could be done without installing any plugins or any Java. That's part of the reason why the it's part of the reason why the functionality for unzipped folders doesn't work in other browsers is because we're doing everything without plugins. It does work in Chrome, and uh, it could be that particular functionality only works in Chrome. Everything else that we discussed, everything else that uh, we discussed works in other browsers as well. If you don't see the link for the webinar attendance form, then shoot us an email to info at biobigbox.com, and we'll be happy to send you the link directly for that. Okay, that's the link for the attendance form so that we could send you the CE credit. Okay, that wraps up the presentation. The presentation is being recorded and will be live on YouTube in the near future. So if you want to share it or watch any parts of it again, then that could be accessed. You could go ahead and search for Bio Big Box and it will come up. Again, I recommend um, following us on Facebook or being in touch with us and we'll be able to keep you updated with new features and functionality. Go ahead and, and go to page biobigbox.com, create your account. Again, it's just your email and your password. It's just another way to stay in touch, but of course you get to use the features and functionalities of BioBigBox. Let us know if you have any questions. Let us know if you have any suggestions and feedback. We love getting suggestions and feedback. It helps us improve and get better and better. Uh, regarding to a question that just came in, the liability issues regarding unauthorized access, either take a look at the past presentation given by Mr. Tuttle, again, search YouTube for Bio Big Box, or stay tuned in two weeks. I believe he's going to be touching on that in his next presentation as well. Okay, again, I'd like to thank everybody for joining and watching during your busy work day. We would love to hear from you. And uh, please go to the website, check it out. Let us know if you have any questions or suggestions. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.